Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning. I'm the master taster of whiskey.com and today I answer questions. FAQ part one. Um, if you want to ask questions to me, please use the word hashtag whiskey.com. Whiskey without an E in front of the Y and com behind and uh, post your questions in the social media where whiskey.com is active, post them in our forum um, and then I will look over those questions you asked and uh, I'm happy to answer your questions and uh, I pick out those questions which are quite easy for me to answer, which are asked most often um, yeah, and which are very interesting to answer. So this time, or the first time, we have three questions. Uh, the first is, what are the differences between whiskies in different price ranges? Is a whiskey for $200 better than a whiskey for $100? The second question is, there are small letters, small printed marks on the bottles, um, in the back of the bottle, in the back of a label, what does those letters mean? And the last question, the longest answer is, uh, why is whiskey becoming more and more expensive? First question, do I find a whiskey for $200 more or better than whiskey for $100. Well, um, we like whiskey and whiskey is a brown spirit. That means the whiskey extracts aromas and color from the oak wood uh, the whiskey matures in. So the longer a whiskey matures in a cask, the more you will find that this one is a whiskey and not a vodka from cereals. So the longer a, a whiskey is in a cask, the, long, the better it will represent the word whiskey. But there are limitations. When whiskey is for a too long time in a cask, then it will extract tannins and bitter substances and then the whiskey will become very, very strong and bitter and tannins and whoa. So quite oaky if you're chewing on a, on a piece of oak. So then it's over the top and then uh, it might have too much of the oak. So there is in the beginning, uh, in the beginning the, the whiskey becomes better the longer it matures in a cask. And the longer the whiskey is in a cask, the more expensive it will be because more of the whiskey will evaporate through the porous walls, the porous staves of the cask, uh, the more uh, capital is bound in the whiskey, storage in the warehouses, uh, yeah, the company has to pay interest rates and insurance on uh, the warehouses and, 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 so it becomes more and more expensive over time. So there is a uh, relationship between the age and the quality and the price. So the more expensive the whiskey is, the older it will be uh, and the more uh, the, the better it will be. So, um, but there are some bottles which are very expens expensive which does not carry an age statement. I think I have uh, I took already a, whis a video, a whiskey, a, a video about the no age statement whiskies, where you can see quite young whiskies, quite expensive, uh, but some have a limited quality, some have a very good quality. So it does matter how you mature. So, um, to make things short. Uh, 
I I personally feel that there is a difference in quality uh, between whiskies of 30, 40, 50, up to a hundred dollars. The more expensive the whiskey is, the better it is typically. Not all, but most of them. And after this mark of a hundred dollars, it had been less in the past, but whiskey became more and more expensive. Um, so this boundary moved upwards uh, to those $100. Uh, and above this limit, uh, whiskey is different, but not necessarily better. So a $200 whiskey might be just scarce or different or a lot more older. So they ask for more money but the, limited, the quality is still limited or is limited and uh, you do not get any more aromas, better aromas. So it is more random if it is better or not. So I personally say when the whiskey reaches $100, then you might be a little bit frustrated because a $200 whiskey is not twice as good as a hundred dollar whiskey is. And a whiskey for five hundred dollars, perhaps there are only fifty or a hundred bottles out there, it's expensive because it's so so rare and not because it's so good. There are some collector's items out on the market, they taste horrible, but they are expensive. One of the last casks of a mothballed or a wrecked torn down distillery. The cask is really rare. It might be the last cask to, uh, taken out of the warehouse because it was the worst cask. But because it's the last, it's very, very expensive. So the worst cask might be the most expensive. You should add a little bit wisdom or knowledge uh, about the distilleries. And therefore we have the whiskey database in where you can uh, have a look at all the distilleries in Scotland, their history and uh, if they're working or not, which equipment they have and and and. So part two, those numbers on the bottle. Here in the back, uh, very very small. In the middle, in the back, I don't know if you're able to see this. They're very small letters telling me 2014-09-09. This might be a date, 2014, the 9th of November. Then 1558, this will be a timestamp in uh, 2400 format. Uh, so this is the date and the time when the bottle went over the bottling line. And if you open case after case and look at those figures or that those numbers and, and dates and timestamps, uh, then you see it's increasing or decreasing. Uh, because every minute uh, the timestamp uh, flips uh, a minute further and different timestamps are on those bottles. Uh, and below there is a LH30941. Uh, most of those numbers or figures, letters uh, on the back of the bottles have an L in it. For my, uh, out of my experience, this means L for lot, a lot number. And then we have some coding in this lot number telling the company what's in it, uh, but not telling us. So it's a code in it. Um, there is a chance that you're able to find out the code, but it's very, very small. We come to this point later on. So here on the Macallan, there is on the back of this label, so printed on the label, uh, it says L0098S space L2 space 19-03 and then 1734. 
So also the last one is timestamp, uh, 5 p.m. and 34 minutes. Then 19-03 uh, might be the date in the year. And the L2 might be a year, 2012. But no, this one is 18 years old and uh, distilled in 96. So it has to be bottled in 2014. So it doesn't fit. And the L0098S is this ominous uh, lot number. The independent bottler, Gordon McPhail, has also uh, a code on the back of the label. And in former times, I found the sheen where the code could be converted into the year of the bottling. Well, uh, today most of the Gordon McPhail bottles uh, have a third label uh, telling the bottling year, so you, there's no longer the need that you translate this number by these ominous uh, codes. Um, I sometimes receive mails asking me, there's a number on the bottle, can you please tell me when this bottle was bottled? This whiskey was bottled. And unfortunately, no, I can't, because those numbers are internal numbers of the companies and a normal person isn't allowed to ask Oh, he might ask, but he will not receive an answer. Uh, what is behind this number? Uh, this number is for, yes, for health reasons. Um, when they are, when you would find not in those bottles, in a different bottle, different kind of bottle, uh, a dead mouse. Then the officials say, "Ooh, danger for the people. Uh, we have to recall, or you have to recall." distillery, you have to recall all those bottles in that batch. And then they look up which date, which timestamp, and then they say, well, we have the smallest uh, number of bottles we have to recall is 1200. And then they give out a call uh, to all the supermarkets, to all the uh, distrib no, not the, to the distributors, uh, to the independent wholesalers. Uh, that those uh, bottles have to be recalled. And they are forwarding those numbers to the, to the final dealer. And uh, he has to look through his shelves if there's a bottle or not. I personally have not seen su such a uh, thing going on with whiskey, especially with Scotch whiskey, no never in two decades. Um, but you can sometimes see it with, uh, well, not that durable uh, food. There sometimes you, uh, you hear about a recall of food. So I'm afraid those figures can give you the year when the whiskey was produced, but the companies won't tell you. Ah, the third question was, why is getting whiskey more and more expensive? There are two, uh, three answers to this. The first is, uh, is stocks and demand. In the past 10-15 years, the demand for whiskey grew globally a lot. Poor states got money, the people uh, came out of poverty, there's a middle class establishing, there's an upper class already for <laughs> a longer time, and they ask for more and more high quality whiskey, Scotch whiskey. And therefore the demand for whiskey rose and rose and rose, and uh, the production in Scotland was too low. And the companies knew that it was too low for several, several years, and they did not enhance the uh, capacity of the distilleries. They, they just slept. Yeah, why? One question is, uh, the managers in the business might stay 
a less time, a shorter time into their position than the whiskey matures. And then the bony, uh, the celery, the variable part of the celery uh, is not depending on how old the whiskey is and how old the, uh, you can sell the whiskey. No, it's immediately selling whatever is there, getting money now. So there's a, a wrong uh, payment uh, scheme active in the whiskey companies, which rewarded managers for emptying warehouses and not filling them. Um, most of the whiskey went to Asia, to North America, South America. Uh, Europe was, well, quite stable and the financial crisis hit the southern states of Europe quite hard, so uh, demand out of Europe is quite stable over the last uh, seven, eight years. Um, so the, the revenues of the complete Scotch whiskey industry rose from year to year because of the global demand. Until last year, 2014, this was the first year in a row of a dozen or more years where revenues and uh, volume, so sold bottles, uh, decreased a little bit, but it decreased. Oh, Cassandra! Um, why? Well, in China, uh, a new law, an anti-corruption anti law, uh, was issued and the Chinese officials are quite rude when it is, uh, comes to those uh, laws and death sentence for severe criminals is still active and there are a lot, a lot more uh, death penalties in China per year than in the US. Well, not only tenfold, more. Um, so those law, this anti-corruption law, was enforced or is enforced quite heavily, and it was quite typical. If you go to a uh, to a company uh, which you want to sell something to, then you brought a bottle, and another bottle, and again a bottle. Uh, and so these bottles now are no longer sold into China, and the decrease in China sales was at least thirty percent, I think, and this brought the steady growth of the Scotch whisky industry to a halt and to a slow down a little bit. I think next year it will go up again. Um, but the warehouses are already empty. So it's just one year where the, the stocks may increase a little bit, but the decrease, the global decrease, I think is slower uh, than the uh, reduction uh, of stocks in the warehouses. So there's nothing one in this direction. Um, and this increased demand for whiskey let the price rise a lot. The second is the, the pound sterling is quite strong. If you're living on the European continent, then the pound sterling rose a lot over the last uh, year, uh, about 13%, 13, 14%. So if you were interested in buying whiskey, well, you had to pay. Um, now, beginning 2015, in April, I think, uh, the European Central Bank uh, started their quantitative easing program, so they bought uh, bad bonds uh, and that brought the euro again under pressure. Together with the winning of the uh, general elections in the UK where David Cameron won again uh, and now it is clear that Great Britain will vote for independence, um, this might increase 
the value of the pound again because it will be no longer that strongly coupled to the euro. But perhaps um, it may also decrease because uh, uh, the, the easy flow of, of goods, of trade, uh, might not be that good as it was in the past. So it's quite indifferent how uh, the prices will develop in the Eurozone, the pound, uh, as well as the complete European community. If you look over to the US, then uh, the US, uh, the dollar became stronger and stronger over the year against the pound. Um, but uh, in the last two months, the pound rose again. So they lost, or, or the, the pound became cheaper by 13%, and I doubt uh, that the distributors uh, have given those 13% to the whiskey connoisseurs. No, <laughs> they put it in their own pocket, I suggest. And uh, now the pound rose again, or rose again, yes, uh, about 7.5% in the last month over uh, April, April and May 2015. Uh, so there is a reason for increasing the price. I don't know. Um, and the third is you can switch over to independent bottlers. So if the big global companies increase their prices, um, then people say, well, I look for the small independent bottlers and there might be a bargain. Uh, but uh, they were hit also because the big companies knew that their whiskey was becoming rare and rare in the year 2000. Uh, a big, one of the biggest uh, corporations uh, stopped their selling of casks to independent bottlers. The next year, the next big one followed, uh, but only for the tier one distilleries, not the tier two distilleries. So there were still some casks left. And in 2007, uh, those selling of casks was completely stopped. And I heard that from a huge, from a big one of the four big independent distillers, independent bottlers told me. How do they react? Well, those big independent bottlers, they bought already their own distilleries because they knew these, uh, their sales model or their company model for buying and selling, buying cars, selling bottles, uh, will stop. They knew that for long. So they decided to buy their own distilleries. Signatory Vintage bought a Radar, Gordon McPhail bought Ben Romach. Ben Romach, yes. And uh, Ian McLeod, Chieftain's Selection, Dan Wagen, uh, they bought at first Glengoyne and then as a second one, Tamdu. So they are, this was necessary to survive, to survive the next, the upcoming struggles. And uh, then there are those very, very small independent bottlers, those armchair bottlers, because they let their cask bottle somewhere else, because they have no own warehouse. Uh, they buy bottles from brokers, uh, buy casks from brokers and sell those bottles. Um, but the profession of the broker is nearly gone because those big corporations own the distilleries they need for their blends. There's no need to, to swap casks any longer. If you need different tastes from your whiskies for a blend, then you have in those huge distilleries uh, pot stills with different shapes. Have a look at Kinnenvie from the William Grant uh, and Sons where Glenfiddich, Balvini, uh, come from. They have in the Kinnenvie distillery several, really eight, nine, ten different sized, uh, different form uh, of pot stills. So they can produce everything they need. They do not have to, to swap casks with others. So this business model has stopped. The brokers are nearly gone. And there were some, well, black sheep. Uh, which filled old empty casks with fresh spirit and did not change uh, 
the letters and the writing on the cask. Waited some time and then there was a quite a light old whiskey coming out of those casks and from time to time I have one of those bottles here in my cask and I shake my head and say it can't be true that this whiskey is that old. Yeah, and to overcome this fraud the Scotch Whiskey Association, the industry body of the Scotch Whiskey industry, decided uh, to have a certification of every Scotch whiskey producer. On one hand, one would prohibit the production of Scotch whiskey somewhere in the world without a drop of Scotch, uh, especially they look to India, I think, um, because blended Scotch whiskey may be bottled outside Scotland and Scotch single malt whiskey or single malt Scotch whiskey has to be bottled in Scotland. So this is the regulation from 2009. Uh, and cheap Scotch whiskey can't be bottled in Scotland and uh, transported with a bottle half around the globe and then be cheap again. No. So you have to, to ship. They dump the cask because they reuse the cask in Scotland for the next run. And they are dumped into huge containers, stainless steel containers typically, and then those stainless steel containers go over, uh, over the ocean to the final destination, and then they are bottled there. And to be sure that this is really Scotch whiskey, they have to be certified, uh, and every well container delivered uh, is marked and numbered and everything. Um, the certification also applies to the very small independent bottlers. And there you can or you have to show a history of every cask. And you can't take a, an empty cask and refill it with some, something else. There has to be a, a history with no gaps in between from production until bottling. Uh, and this certification will break the necks of those companies who, well, aren't that legally correct. Mm, yeah. So this will also reduce the available bottles in the market. Well, it's, <laughs> I do not care about those bottles, but uh, it will increase the price of the rest. So every single effect in the industry shows prices are going up and they haven't forgot anything. So this is the reason why Scotch whiskey increases more and more. Well, how to react? Well, buy your bottles of Scotch whiskey now. The interest rates you're getting for your money at the bank are low, really low. And the price rise in whiskey is quite high, so you can earn a margin by buying your whiskey now. Be ahead of the others. Whiskey which will come will be no longer that old as it was before because warehouse uh, stocks are so low. So whatever you're able to buy uh, with quite an age statement on it, it will be worth the money until the new Macallan distillery and the, the, the new Glenlivet distillery uh, will increase the stocks significantly. This will take decades. Yeah. Decades <laughs> where you could be able to, well, to taste excellent whiskey if you have built or had built your own stocks. Thank you very much for watching. There's more to come. Feel free to share this video with your friends. And next month you will have a new video with my frequently asked questions answers.